As I was recently touring the internet, I came across a really interesting effect, and it has to do with a simple GIF file. Check this out. Here's the finished project. I'm selecting my play button and I'm showing you a preview of my animated GIF here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended. And here on the Russell Brown Show, I'm going to demonstrate how to achieve this effect. Notice that most of the image is frozen, yet only a certain portion of the image is moving. And that's really, really interesting. And you can get some great effects this way. So how can we do this? I'm going to stop this video right here. Now to begin with, you must be using Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended for this particular project. Okay, step number one, I need to calibrate my monitor on my particular system so that I can get the best quality when working with video. I calibrate that here on my monitor and I come up with a profile for my monitor. And now that I have a profile, I can bring in video, in this case, from the iStock Photo Library and display it accurately on my screen. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to hit the Command and the letter O on my Macintosh or the Control and the letter O on a PC to open a file. And in this case, I'm targeting the iStock video file that I downloaded from their site. I'm showing you this so that you could also download this big web version of this file and follow along with this tutorial. Okay, let's now open that. And here is our first and most important step. As I said earlier, it has to do with profiles. Notice that I'm assigning the profile of my monitor, my calibrated monitor, to the video file. As you can see here, here's my series of profiles and I'm targeting my current profile, my up-to-date profile for my screen. I am not going to convert it as it says down here. I'm strictly assigning the profile. And when I click OK, it will then display the video accurately here inside of Photoshop with the color quality that I'm looking for. And on top of that, if I do any adjustments with, for example, adjustment layers to this video, I can be assured that any adjustments I make will then export out correctly. Now you know. Okay, here we go. Now this is the original video file. As you can see here, inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5 Extended, I have my animation timeline panel open here at the bottom. You can open this panel if you have CS5 Extended by going to the window menu and down to animation. That's critical that you open that up for a project like this. Now as you can see here, I can scrub through my video by moving this control arm across the top of my timeline. I can see that there's a lot more video here than I actually need for this project because our goal is to isolate a particular region of this video and play it over and over again in a loop to keep the file size as small as possible. Now here's step number one though before I do anything. I need to go to this flyout menu right here. Click on this, scroll down until you come to the document settings right here. Click on document settings and notice that in this particular case with the iStock footage it's using 30 frames per second. For a project like this, for the web and for an animated GIF, I'm dropping this to 15 frames per second. This is your first step when working with imagery from iStock or imagery from your own camera. I'm going to click OK. So now I've reduced this down and now we can start to isolate in on the area that we need to work with. I'm going to move my timeline indicator here until I come to a point in the video where I want to start. I want to start mine right here. Now that this is positioned, I'm going to move over here, as you can see my cursor, right over the work area start point. I'm going to click and hold and drag this over to the right. I'm now going to hold down my shift key and snap it right to this 
start point right here. Did you see that? I first aligned this position and then I move my end point over. And now I want to capture about 12 frames of this video. 12 frames works really well for an animation like this. And of course, the key to success is the fewest number of frames necessary to create your animation. To get just the number of animation frames I want, I'm moving down here to the base of my timeline animation panel and select next frame right here. And I'm going to click once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now that's pretty good. That gives me twelve frames in which to work with. I'm now going to grab the end point down here, the work area end point, click and hold, drag to the left, holding down my shift key, and snap once again. Now I've isolated a unique area here of all of these frames of this image. And if I select the play button, watch what happens. The play button will only play the frames inside of that selected region. Do you see that? Cool. That's the portion of this video that I'm going to use. So let's stop that. Next step, and follow carefully. The next step is to once again go to the flyout menu here, and we're now going to trim document duration to work area. Now the work area was defined by the two end points that we brought in on our video. And let's trim it. So now we've thrown away all of the extra video. If we hit the play button, you can see that we only have that portion we're looking for. Let's stop this by clicking on this button here at the base again. So now I want to go in and freeze my image. I want to freeze it on a particular frame. I'm going to scroll through these frames until I find a frame of the woman's face that I like. And I like this frame right here. I'm going to go to my Select menu and select All. Then from my Edit menu, I'm going to copy Merged. And then again from the Edit menu, I'm going to Paste. So I'm pasting a frozen frame right here on top. This is my master frame, and then my animation will be added to this frozen frame. So now let's go in and isolate those areas that we want to freeze. The best way I've found to do this is with the Quick Mask tool. Here I'm going to select the Q key on my keyboard, the letter Q. You can also access it down here on your panel of tools, right here. In the Q key mode, if I select my paintbrush, as you see here, and I'm painting with black, as you see here, and I go up here to my options bar, and notice that I have a 25 pixel brush with a hardness of about 68. As I go in and I paint over the surface, this will be the areas that I'm going to freeze. I want these areas to not move. So I'm going to go in and paint them like this. I don't want her ear to move, and I don't want her shoulders to move, or her body. I only want the hair to be in motion. Now, as you can see as I'm doing this, you can start to pre-plan your projects. And if you're going to photograph a model in movement, you want to make sure that their face did not move. And as you can see in this case, you brought in the blowing fan to just make those areas of your image that you want to move flow in the wind. And those areas you don't want to move, try and keep them as still as possible. In this case, I happen to be lucky, and I found this particular video on the iStock library. Now notice, these are the areas that I want to be flowing, the areas that are not covered with the red frisket of my quick mask. I'm now going to go in and cover up my fan, because I don't want my fan to be in motion as well. Notice that I'm covering the entire area, and I can add a little bit of extra around it. I don't want that to move. 
this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to select my Q key on my keyboard or select this icon at the base here. And now I have a selection. It's a great way to make a quick selection with that paintbrush like technique. Now let's turn off our video layer so we can see what's happening. I'm going to turn off the visibility of my video layer, but I have my frozen layer selected. I'm going to hold down my Option key on the Macintosh or my Alt key on the PC now. Then I'm going to hover over this icon to add a layer mask. Watch what happens. Click. By doing so, I'm isolating my frozen areas against this transparent background. And now if we turn on the visibility of our video, it then merges the two together. Pretty cool. Let's play the video and see what happens. So I now have live action showing through a portion of this mask. This looks great. I could now go in and add any color balance or adjustments that I wanted to this image. But now we're ready for the next big move. We're now ready to turn this into an animation. To do that, watch very carefully because these next steps are critical. I'm going to this flyout menu right here. I'm going to scroll down and I want you to go down to this particular menu item called Flatten Frames into Layers. I'm going to flatten all my frames into layers right here, clicking that. Now see what's happened over here? I have a series of layers for each of my frames within my animation. But I also have my original documents down here. I'm going to throw away my original documents and be left with just the animation sequence. It's a pretty cool technique. It's converted my video into unique frames for each of the positions of the animation. OK, watch very carefully. Here's another important step. Right down here at the base of my animation timeline panel, I have the ability to convert to a frame animation. Click on this. OK, so we now have a frame animation that we've created from a video file. There's only one frame of animation, however, in our video. So we need to increase that based upon the number of frames we have over here in our layers. To do that, we go to the flyout menu again, and we're going to make frames from layers. You can see that you're going to want to watch this video a couple times. Frames from layers. So we've now converted this into a series of frames and if we click our play button, watch what happens. It plays our series of frames. Let's try that again. And it goes through and plays them. I notice down here that each one of the frames has a particular amount of time that is applied to that frame. In this particular case, I find that Photoshop likes to apply a few seconds to the first frame. So I'm going to click on that flyout menu and select no delay. So if I scroll through each of my frames, 1 through 12 in this case, I notice that they all say 0 seconds down here at the bottom, just like this. So when I hit the play button, I only see them for the smallest and shortest amount of time. That's great. But now I want it to loop around on itself. So instead of just playing once, I'm clicking on the word once down here in the lower left hand corner and selecting forever. And now select the play button. Fantastic. This is looking great. We've come all the way to this stage where we have individual frames that we can work with. And just to point out, each one of these frames in my animation panel is directly linked 
to one of your layers here over in your layers panel. Notice as I click on frame number six, it then is assigned to a particular layer. And if I work or adjust on any of those layers, it will then adjust that frame of the animation. Fantastic. We're now ready for our final step. We'd like to export this as an animated GIF and put it on our website. To do that, I go to the File menu and down here to Save for Web and Devices. Here we are in the Save for Web and Devices dialog. Pretty complicated, but here are the basics. To begin with, start by adjusting the size of your overall image. You may have been working with a really large video file. Drop its file size down for your particular use on your web page by entering the values in image size right here. By doing so, it will then resize it down to that particular size. Next, select GIF in this particular case because I'm creating an animated GIF file right here. Now these are some of the settings I like to use for my best quality. I'm using selective for the way in which it chooses its colors. I'm going to actually dither my image with a pattern, selecting the dither technique for pattern. This will then dither the image and give me a more realistic look to my image. I'm using 256 colors in this case because I want the greatest quality. I'm not so concerned about the file size as I am the quality in this particular case, but you can choose an experiment with different number of colors for your GIF animation. I'm going to stay with the maximum number of colors in this case. Next, Notice that I'm converting it to sRGB. I get my best color fidelity and transfer to the web if I choose that. And I'm currently previewing in my monitor color space, which is great. I can now go down here and select Save, or I can actually preview it. Let's go ahead and preview this by selecting the Preview button. It will now build the animated GIF and then display it here, as you can see, as a preview inside of my current default browser. Cool! So there's my finished result. I can close this down, go back here, and I can actually select Save. I can select to save the images, or I can select to save the images in combination with an HTML file. There you go. You've seen a step-by-step -step process of taking video file, in this case from the iStock photo library of video, and converting it into an animation where you isolate the animation to a targeted region within the image. Give it a try.